Hello, this is Brian with FilmDirect. I'm going to do a video here on how to set up the PrintFab RIP software on a Mac computer. Today we're going to set up the Canon Pro 100, but this tutorial would also work on different printers as well. So I'm going to assume you got PrintFab installed on your system. So here's the PrintFab toolbox. Go ahead and add printer. It's going to detect all the printers on your system. OK, so now that we've got the printer added, let's go ahead and exit out of this. To change the PrintFab RIP settings, what you do is open up your favorite art program. Today, we're going to be using Adobe Illustrator. We've got a document set up to print a series of halftone dots. It's just a test print we're going to do. So go File, Print. It's going to bring up this dialog box. Make sure that the printer selected is the one you want to use. Uh, the paper size or media, you want to choose the correct paper size. Uh, A3 Plus is the 13 by 19, but there's other there's 11, 17, and 8.5 by 11 as well. Under printer, same thing. Make sure the printer is selected. Under layout, you want to go to print fab settings. There's a number of different options here. Under main, you want to change the media type to transparent. And this is the same for most of uh, most of the printers out there, we're doing, we're setting up the Pro 100, but the, the 6820 also uses really similar um, settings. Um, when you purchase the software from us, we'll give you the exact settings for your printer. Under quality, you want to change it to 2400. You could go 9600, it's just going to print a little bit slower. Air diffusion or the stithering, leave that where it is. For brightness and contrast, this controls um, not the size of the halftone dot, but the clarity of the halftone dot. And, uh, you really need a uh, linear, you, you basically need a densitometer to, to really dial this in. But we do, when we give you the settings, we've already dialed them in. For this particular printer, uh, we found that 130 on the brightness scale works really good. And then uh, between a 90 to 95% contrast will, is, is gonna get you a linear, or really close to a linearized dot. So that means, what that means is, is if, if you set up a 10% dot in your art program, you're going to get a, probably a 12% dot on film. If you don't mess with this, you're probably going to end up with like a 15 to 20% dot representing a 10% dot on your screen. So your curves and your um, halftones are going to be a little bit off when you go on press. So that's what that is right there. Um, those are the only settings we really need to mess with on this page. This other stuff is for um, color printing. Um, under print fab settings, then we're going to go to printer features. Uh, this this stuff you don't have to mess with it too much. You can you can you can play around with it if you want to. But um, the main settings you're going to be using are right here under Special Settings Screen Printing One. You've got your halftone screen mode, screening saturation, the LPI angle shape, and then it goes into which cartridges you want to turn on and off. So the halftone screen mode is what you're you're going to need to set to begin with. Um, there's four different options. You can go single black, multi black, and then you've got single black pre half toned. These pre half tones, what that means is it's going to default to whatever your dot size, shape, and angle is in your art program. So, for example, in Illustrator, if you have it set up at 65 line screen or whatever, it's going to it's going to half tone whatever's in your art program. If you go single black or multi black, it's going to use these particular settings through Print Fab. So for this default setting, I'm going to use multi-black. So it's going to print from every cartridge of black. Ink saturation, we found on the Pro 100 that 220% is a really good place to start. The screen LPI, I'm going to leave it at 50. The angle, I'm going to change that to 25. And I'm going to use a round dot. I'm going to leave all the multi-black cartridges enabled. So this is... This is a decent setting for the Pro 100. You can mess around with it from there. If it looks too light, you can bump up the screen saturation. If the if the 50 LPI looks too small, you can change that to, you know, 44 is really common. You can go down to 40 or whatever. Um, and then you want to save the setting. This, you're going to save a default setting. So save current settings. I typically start with the uh, naming the printer, and then I'll put the line screen and angle. And if there's anything else you want to put, but for right now, I'm just going to leave it like that. So now in the future, when you do, when you go to pick this printer, you can use this as your default and you can save as many settings as you want. That's what's really nice about using the Mac software with PrintFab. The, the Windows version only lets you save one setting at a time where the Mac version, you can set multiple settings. 
So we're going to exit out of that by hitting print. Now that the PrintFab software is set up um, to print to print this illustration, we can go to output. Right now, it's only set up with black, so it's only going to print process black. If we had um, oh, if we had uh, other spot colors involved, you would see them right below this, and you could you could you could click the print icon, and it would print one sheet of film for each icon selected. So that's how you would that's how you would print um, spot color separations. And if you did choose the if you wanted to um, if you wanted Illustrator to control the halftone dots, what you could do is go back to printer, print fab settings, let's see this one, and go to multi black pre halftoned, and now it's going to use these these settings by default. So you can override the print fab settings by changing these settings right here. So when we go to hit print, it's going to print this, and it's going to print this at a 60, 60 line half tone right here. So if we go ahead and hit print, that's going to send it to the printer, and um, that's about it. It's going to default to that setting that we just did. If you want to change it, what you do is go back to printer, and then, um, like I say, go back to print fab settings. This stuff you won't have to change very often. Once it's set up and saved, you won't have to save change that. It's going to be more right here. This is going to be the stuff that you're going to mess around with mostly. And then every time you save it, I suggest just saving a different setting. If let's say we want to save a 60 LPI setting, we'll save that. Now we have two settings save up. The one thing I do want to note is if you open up a new document size, you have to pick the profile. So you want to go to printer and you actually want to choose one of these or one of your um, setup pro presets. Otherwise, it's going to default to something else and the print may look kind of banded or, or not very dark. What it's doing is it print, it's printing the default setting. So you definitely want to choose a preset or assign some parameters before you to print for each doc. Each time you open up a new document, you have to choose one of your particular settings, or you have to assign um, parameter settings here, and that'll override the that, uh, um, default settings. So that's about it. It's a pretty simple, easy to, easy to use software. It's, um, it's very accurate, and uh, it's, it's affordable too. So if you have any questions, feel free to put a comment in the section below and or hit us up. Thanks for watching.